In this video, we're going to derive a different form of the statement of Green's theorem. So let's remember a couple of things. Let's start by just writing down some of the facts about Green's theorem. And then we'll kind of rework it in vector form. Green's theorem says, first of all, I'll just list these. I'm not going to write this in a for very formal way. But D has to be a Jordan region. And so what that means then is that its boundary is equal to a Jordan curve, right? And a Jordan curve is a simple closed curve and or path, you might say, simple closed path. And we are going to assume that this path is positively oriented. All right, so remember how this works. Positive orientation of a path, number one, this path can get a little wacky, right? But Green's theorem says that this doesn't, this path here, this C, does not intersect itself ever, even though it can get wacky, right? It doesn't intersect itself, um, and it bounds this region D. So the D is the interior region here, bounded by this curve, and this symbol partial D just represents the boundary of this curve, of this region, sorry, which is positively oriented. So that's the other thing. Positive orientation means that as you travel around this blue boundary, um, the region D is always to your left-hand side, okay? So C here is the boundary of D. All right, now the other thing that we have here is we have a vector field defined on this region. By the way, this is a plane region, okay? So this is a region, I didn't leave my enough, myself enough room to draw the axes, but this is in a region in the XY plane, okay? Maybe I should give myself some more room if I want to keep drawing on this picture. So. This is a region in the xy plane. And a couple more things are happening here as far as Green's theorem is concerned. We have a vector field, okay? And so this vector field is defined all over D, but specifically it's also defined on the boundary of D, okay? And so there's this vector field F. Its component functions are P and Q. And P and Q are differentiable. They have continuous first order derivatives, okay? So um, the derivatives of P and Q, I won't write that down, but P and Q have continuous first order derivatives. And so what we want to do now is we want to reframe Green's theorem, which by the way, we should give the statement before we do it. Green's theorem then says the following. The path integral around the boundary, I'll use this notation, of f dot dr. So the work done by this vector field around the boundary curve is equal to the double integral over the entire region d, right, applied to dq dx minus dp dy dA. So the, the not applied to, but the uh, area integral of this difference of the derivatives of the component functions here. Okay, so our first way that we're going to reframe this uh, theorem in terms of vectors is to imagine that this region, this two-dimensional region and the two-dimensional vector field on this region, imagine that this whole thing is embedded in R3 uh, in, the, in the sense that it's living on the floor in R3, okay? And so in this case then we have a vector field K which is just, or a vector at least, a unit vector k, which is uh, the vector that points one unit in the z direction and nowhere else, right? So it picks out the z component direction. All right, now the other thing that we can do is if we embed this vector field in three-dimensional space, so not only, not only is the region thought of as living on the floor in a three-dimensional room, but the vector field itself is thought of as living only on the floor, then we can extend this vector field by just doing this, right? We just add a zero component. We make sure that the vector field is only working, um, it's only spitting out vectors in the c uh, two components for which uh, the domain lives, right? And so we can just extend it this way. And at this point, once we have a vector field in three dimensions, then we can apply the curl to F, all right? So let's do it. So let's take the curl of this vector field F. Remember how this works. The curl is a formal cross product of the gradient vector, or the del operator, you might say, with F. And it's done as, again, formal um, cross product. So IJK, partial derivative operators, dx, dy, dz. And then our components of our vector field are now P, Q, 0. 
okay zero here um, so what's going to happen <clears throat> there's a couple other things happening that I should say which I didn't say up here I started to say more about P and Q but I didn't P and Q originally uh, came from just the plane right they only depend on the plane so P is really just a function of X and Y and the same thing is true for Q because we extended this vector field we did not extend the definitions of P and Q though they still only depend on the points that they're attached to in the XY plane okay and so there's there's our P and Q so what we end up with then is when we try to write out this curl we are gonna see that the first component is zero right minus the Z derivative of Q but Q is a function that does not depend on Z so its derivative is zero so the first component of our curl is zero we move to the second component same thing happens DZ DP exact same reasoning P does not depend on Z, so that's zero. And then DX, D0, DX, that's zero. So the first two components of the curl are just zero. And the third component now, this is the one that's working on this little subdeterminant right here. And this, when we work it out, look what happens. This is exactly DQ, DX minus, right, minus from the determinant DP, DY. And that is exactly what's inside this integral, right? So the first way to rewrite Green's theorem in terms of vectors, a vector calculus, is to swap out this integrand with a curl, right? But it can't be the whole curl because a curl is a vector field. Even though the first two components of this vector field are zeros, it's a vector field. So what we have to do now is pick out the third component, pick out the one that we want. And one way to do that uh, one fund, you know, systematic way that's, that has good mathematical meaning is to take the dot product of this vector with this vector k that I wrote up here, right, with this vector k. All right, and so what we end up with is that this integrand can be represented by the curl of f, that's this vector, dotted with k. All right, and so this whole thing can just go in here, and what we end up with is this vector form of Green's theorem that is in terms of the curl of our vector field. And so this can be very, very useful um, when you're thinking about what Green's theorem is telling you. So this is the boundary integral, all right, of F dotted with dr equal to double integral over the region D of now we're going to replace that integrand with the curl of F dotted with k dA. All right, 